So in this video, I want to explain a little bit about how to use Cloud Monitor's Site Monitor function. This allows you to monitor the performance of a website or web service from uh, several locations around the world. Um, it's actually a really cool tool. Uh, you can use it with websites on and off Alibaba Cloud, so you don't even need to have your resources on Alibaba to use this. Uh, and it's very, very valuable for determining whether or not your website or web service is working and what the performance looks like from different regions or locations around the world. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Hey there. So here we are in the Cloud Monitor documentation. Uh, I'm going to be uh, giving a simple demonstration of how to use Cloud Monitor's site monitoring feature. Uh, I do recommend that you take a look at the Cloud Monitor documentation before getting started in the Cloud Monitor console. Uh, it will give you a much clearer picture of what Cloud Monitor is and what it can do. In simple terms, Cloud Monitor allows you to monitor state changes and, and changes in monitored performance metrics for Alibaba Cloud services. It's a good way to monitor all of your infrastructure that you build with Alibaba Cloud. It lets you keep uh, track of everything that's happening with your Alibaba Cloud services. Okay, so site monitoring specifically uh, is a function that's designed to help you do things like monitor website or web service performance and uptime. It's really neat. Uh, it's built right into the Cloud Monitor console uh, and it allows you to monitor different web services using any of these protocol types. So HTTP, it can send ping requests, so ICMP traffic. It can uh, send raw TCP or UDP uh, traffic to a web service to check its availability. Uh, it can uh, tell you how long it takes to resolve DNS queries or if a DNS resolution fails. It can check uh, public email services to see if they are up or down. So if you're running a mail service, that could be useful to monitor via POP3 or SMTP. And it can even monitor FTP sites. So it can send an FTP request to a specific URL or IP address, and then you can get availability metrics like response time and status codes. Uh, you can even uh, go into the advanced settings for something like FTP and set the port and whether to establish the connection securely. All right, so let's try some of this out in the console. I have already set up a simple demonstration website here. Uh, this is running on an Alibaba Cloud ECS instance in Singapore. The address is it's peanut butter devops time dot xyz. You can also throw a www in front of that if you like. I've set it up so it will resolve either way. Whether or not you have that www, it should still work. I haven't actually bothered to put any content into the page. The default page here will be adequate for testing purposes. Uh, let's go into the Cloud Monitor website, or excuse me, the Cloud Monitor console, and set up a, a set of monitoring tasks that will keep track of the performance and availability of this site. And then we'll try a couple things like uh, maybe moving the uh, index.html file somewhere else or even disabling Apache and see what happens in the Cloud Monitor console when we do that. All right, so here we are in Cloud Monitor. Cloud Monitor allows you to monitor a bunch of different things, uh, host metrics, so things like CPU or memory utilization on ECS instances, events, like when services start or stop, uh, you can even set up custom monitors. You can use the Cloud Monitor SDK to define custom monitoring metrics, uh, say, specific to your application, uh, and then send those metrics to Cloud Monitor using the SDK. So you might be able to do something like monitor Java JVM memory usage specifically. Uh, we're not going to talk about that. That's a topic for another day. What we're here to talk about is site monitors. So to set up a site monitor to watch this website and make sure it's up, uh, we need to go into New Site Monitor here from the left-hand menu bar. Uh, just click on this little arrow to expand, and then we click on Site Manage. And from here, we can set up monitoring tasks. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to click on New Monitoring Task. Uh, we'll use an HTTP monitor. I'll call it My Site Monitor. And then the address to monitor is this web address. Actually, because it's so long, let's just go ahead and copy-paste it in so that we make sure that we get it right. And actually, we should probably, yeah, there we go, perfect. We include the HTTP on the front. Uh, you can set the monitoring frequency here, anywhere from an hour down to a minute. We'll choose one minute. Uh, you can also choose exactly what type of request to send. We will be sending a git. Uh, you could also do post or head. Uh, and in fact, you can even check to see if the response matches a certain pattern. So uh, if this page needed to say something like, I am healthy, I can go ahead and check for that pattern in the response to this GET request. I can even send headers or set cookies here. 
uh, or set authentication rules. I'm not going to do any of that, but just be aware that you have those options if you need them. All right. The next thing to do once you've set up the site to be monitored and the monitoring interval and any advanced settings is to set the probe points. So by default, uh, the, the basic version of Site Monitor that's included by default with Cloud Monitor lets you monitor uh, your, your site from five locations or five probe points as they're called. Uh, you can choose different probe points from the ones listed here by clicking on this custom probe point link. Uh, the, the thing you keep in mind though is that you can only have five. So if I want to add another probe point from this list, I'm going to have to delete something up here. Right now we're monitoring our site from Shanghai, Singapore, Santa Clara, so that's US West Coast, and Virginia, US East Coast, and also Tokyo, Japan. Alright, so I'm going to remove Virginia since we already have a monitoring point here in the US, and let's replace this that, that uh, Virginia location with somewhere in Europe. How about Frankfurt, Germany? All right, great. So now my probe points are a little bit better distributed. I have three in Asia, one in the US, and one in Europe. Okay, that takes care of that. The next thing to do is to configure alarms. So this is the coolest part of Cloud Monitor is the ability to set and send alarms. Um, the neat thing here is that I can choose an error condition. For instance, I could say if the available probe point ratio is less than 50%. So if less than 50% of these probes are getting a response from my website, send me an email, right? You can actually, I won't show you in this video right now, but you can go into the contacts group part of the Cloud Monitor console and you can configure groups of people or even uh, service email addresses to send alerts to. I'm just gonna use the default contact group, which goes to my personal uh, Outlook account. And we will say that if half of the probes are not able to reach the website three times in a row, so that would take uh, three minutes because our monitoring interval is one minute, so one, two, three minutes. If half of the uh, probe points cannot reach our website for three minutes, then email me. I'm in the default contact group, so I'll get an email with an alert that something is wrong if these probe points aren't able to hit the website. Uh, you can actually also send notifications to DingTalk uh, you can set up a robot inside DingTalk. DingTalk is a little bit like Slack. It's the Alibaba Cloud's uh, enterprise communications tool. It is free. You can just get it from DingTalk.com. I highly recommend you do that if you're an Alibaba Cloud user. Uh, DingTalk integrates really, really well with Cloud Monitor, and it will allow you to keep track of uh, your cloud resources much more easily. Okay. Uh, in this case, though, I'm just going to set up email. Advanced settings, you can also choose a, a, a mute period to silence alarms. So if an alarm triggers over and over and you're already aware of the situation, that can be kind of annoying. So you can uh, also set a silence time for the alarm. So after it triggers the first time, it won't trigger again for 24 hours. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave those settings alone. Uh, I actually don't, don't really want the alarm to be silenced, so I'm not going to put anything in here. Uh, and then the really cool thing, uh, which I won't have time to cover in this video, is alarm callbacks. You can, uh, you can send a request, a, uh, a post request, to a specific URL. So you could use that to like trigger a function in Alibaba Cloud's function compute uh, to do some other job when this alarm triggers, or you could use this to integrate the alerts from Cloud Monitor with some third-party service. So you'd put in any publicly accessible URL here. The only catch is that this only supports HTTP right now, not HTTPS. All right, great. So we've got a default contract group configured. So we'll get an email when there's an alert. We've configured the alert rules. We've set our five probe points. We've set the URL of the website we want to monitor, and we've given the monitor a name, and we've chosen HTTP as our protocol. That is all we need to do to get started, so I'll just click the Create button, and that will go ahead and create this alarm. And just for the heck of it, let's create a few more uh, monitoring tasks. Let's create a, a ping task and also a DNS task. My website ping uh, monitor, and the monitor address should be just like we had here, copy, Paste. We'll send 20. Oop, in this case, you do not include HTTP, so we should be okay now. All right. Send 20. Uh, we'll send 20 uh, requests in a row. Uh, one minute intervals again. 
Uh, again, we'll replace Virginia with uh, Frankfurt, Germany. I want to keep my results consistent here. And we'll say if packet loss is greater than 50%, then if three times in a row, so again, after three minutes, if packet loss is greater than 50%, then send an alarm. And I'll use the default contract group again, and I'll hit Create. So now we'll also be able to monitor our site using ping. And then we'll set up one more monitor uh, to monitor DNS. So the test name will be my site DNS monitor. I will monitor, uh, oops, let me, no, I'll just copy paste it again. Monitor my, my website, it's peanut butter devops time.xyz. We'll check for an A record. Um, we need to pick a DNS server here. Um, and we have, we can choose what IP address we expect this to resolve to, which is kind of neat. Uh, so let's actually run dig against my server here. We'll do dig, it's peanut butter devops time.xyz. There's the record. This is what we expect to resolve to. So I will put that into the DNS server box here. Beautiful. Oh, oh excuse me. Put it into the expect to resolve IP box. And for the DNS server, we will go with the server that responded to this request. How about that? So let me see. I'm not sure if that's written in the details of dig. Uh, oh, okay, actually that's not gonna help. I'm on a corporate network, so the local DNS server is the one that responded. Um, we could actually, since we own the site, we could make sure that we're using a DNS server that belongs to Alibaba Cloud. But you know what? Let's just use Google DNS. Let's see if Google DNS can resolve this site. That's a good test for users outside China. All right, again, we'll replace Virginia with Frankfurt, Germany. Okay, and we will say again that if the available probe point ratio is less than 50%, three times in a row, one minute interval, so three minutes, if, if we have an available probe point ratio less than 50%, three times in a row, then trigger an alarm. Fantastic. Okay, and let's go with create. And we now have three different types of monitors set up and monitoring our site. And you can already see that, that uh, we've sent the first set of requests from this HTTP monitor and the site availability is 100% and the average response time is 308 milliseconds. We can actually click on this and see some of those metrics, which is really cool. So there's a little dashboard in here where you can look at availability over time uh, and also look at response times. So you can see the availability rate over time as a graph, and you can also look at response times. Typically, by default, the console will show this map of China, but there's no reason that you can't replace that with a map of the world. Uh, there actually is an option to do that. All right. And then you can look at other things like DNS re resolution time in milliseconds, or TCP connection time, time to redirect. This will be flat because there are no redirects configured for our site. Uh, curl start transfer time. The test is actually done using curl, so you can see how long it takes curl to get started. A pre-transfer time will be listed, and for sites with SSL, you'll see SSL connection time, which I think should be flat, yeah, because we're not using SSL. All right, uh, that's it for the HTTP monitoring. Let's go ahead, and actually, you know what, before we leave, let's, let's uh, go ahead and switch over to the uh, world map, because I only have one probe point configured in China and it's Shanghai, it would be better if we could see the world map, uh, which you can do by clicking here on world map in the left hand menu bar. Okay, let's take a look at that. All right, great. And so here is the world map uh, listing all of our available probe points. Uh, you can see that if you mouse over these, you get a list of all of the uh, associated data from the HTTP monitor. So you can see how long it took the DNS resolution step took to happen. You can see how long it took to establish the TCP connection, all of that. And uh, the dots in green successfully connected to the site. If any of these were red, it would indicate a failure to connect. Um, and you can see here that the response time from the US is slow, which makes sense uh, because the site is in Singapore. Um, same for Germany. Um, but the response time from Japan is pretty good. Yeah, okay, there we go, that, that all looks reasonable, great. Um, you can also click through here and have a look at indicator trends, so this would be things like total response time. 
operator trends. I believe this chart is to indicate um, how response times vary by telecom, but that's really only useful inside China. You can look at error rates. Uh, there have been no errors, so this is empty. Access strategy. Uh, this is actually a complete log of all of the access requests that took place and the associated download speeds, which is very useful. And then any alarm rules we've configured will show up in here. Uh, we, in this case, have one alarm rule uh, that will trigger after less than 50% avail. If, if uh, the availability of the site falls below 50%, meaning uh, half or more of our probe points can't reach the site three times in a row, then this alarm will trigger. All right, let's go back to the overview page, and then let's uh, go all the way back to the uh, site monitoring dashboard, and then we can take a look at what the ping test results look like. All right, so here are the ping test results. Uh, very similar dashboard to what you saw in the uh, HTTP monitor. Uh, the difference this time is the only uh, data available is the total response time for the ping requests and the failure rate. Uh, and you can see since we're monitoring from Shanghai, there's one little dot on here that shows our response time from there. Uh, let's go to the world map. Okay, you can see all of the probe points have responded and it lists their response time, 250 milliseconds, uh, 67, 87, and one millisecond, which makes perfect sense because the probe in the Singapore region is probably running in the same physical data center as our website, which is deployed on Singapore ECS. So you'd expect that to have the fastest response time. And again, you can look through the alarm rules, the error rates, operator trends, and indicator trends. Okay, let's go back and take a look at the DNS monitor and see what data is available there. So you can see from the DNS monitor, uh, again, very, very similar console, but this time the only listed data is total response time to resolve uh, the DNS, uh, excuse me, to resolve the uh, domain name of our site to the IP address using DNS. Uh, let's take a look at the world map again. Again, uh, the world map will uh, list any, any responses that we've got. Um, in this case, it doesn't look like there's anything showing up there yet. And then, again, you have this information about error rates, operator and indicator trends, currently configured alarm rules, and then access strategy, which should give you a a list of any any DNS monitoring results that have uh, occurred so far. Actually, not all of the areas in the console over here on the left menu bar in Cloud Monitor, not all of these will be populated for every type of alarm. Some of these uh, items actually don't make sense for DNS monitoring, so they will remain empty. Okay, so let's go back, and here we are, and you can see that so far everything's working okay. Uh, the next thing to do, of course, would be to try to break this, right? We want to see if these monitoring tasks can actually detect when there's a problem. Uh, the obvious thing to do, I think, would be to go ahead and first let's play with breaking DNS and see how long it takes us to get an alert, uh, how long it takes for this availability to drop. So let's go ahead and remove our DNS entry and see how long it takes for the console to notice. All right, actually I've had a better idea, a cleverer idea here. How about we go into the DNS console and change our website uh, DNS A record so that it points to the wrong place. That should actually also trigger uh, an alarm because we've actually configured in the DNS monitor an expected IP address that DNS should resolve to. So let's modify our DNS configuration so that this thing points to the wrong place, uh, which means we need to pick somewhere to point it. Um, let me, let, let's see here. Um, let's go ahead and dig a public site, so like google.com, and uh, let's go ahead and just take this first A record here, and that's going to be the new A record that our peanut butter devops.xyz points to. Okay. All right, that's one. And then two, just to make everything consistent, we'll set both of our A record a records to point to Google. I'll click Enable to make sure that this propagates, uh, and then we'll see how long it takes for the DNS alarm to break. So we'll go back here, we'll refresh, we'll sit here for a couple minutes, I'll use the magic of time travel to go forward in time, and we'll see how long it takes for this alarm to trigger. All right, so here we are in the future, I've fast forwarded, and something very odd is going on. Okay, so if we look at what's happening here, uh, we're getting 0% availability from our DNS monitor. This makes sense, because when we configured the DNS 
monitor inside of Cloud Monitor's Site Monitor console, one of the things that we set up was an expected DNS response. So we told the DNS monitor, when you try to resolve its peanut butter DevOps time.xyz, you should get the following IP address back. And then we specified the IP address of our ECS instance in Singapore. Then we went into the DNS console and intentionally changed that IP address, uh, the DNS record IP address, to be something else. So now every time the DNS monitor resolves our site, it's getting this back as the response, this Google IP address. Okay, but why are the other two monitors failing? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, ping tests to Google should still work. Uh, visiting google.com over HTTP and getting a 200 OK back, that should also still work. But for some reason, these two uh, things have failed as well. So what could the reason for that be? Well, there's a pretty good reason, and it's very China-specific. One of the monitoring locations that I selected uh, was was uh, Shanghai, and Google services are blocked in China. So when I've pointed our our DNS record to Google services, that causes some of the ping checks and HTTP checks to fail as well. So let's take a look at what's going on in the DNS monitor console first. So you can see that we've gone from 100% availability down to zero percent. Uh, none of the DNS resolution requests is uh, returning what we expect it to. Uh, and you can actually see on the graph here that the availability gets lower and lower as the, the change to the DNS A record propagates through the DNS system, which is kind of cool. It doesn't just go from 100 to 0. Uh, cached DNS entries take some time to go away, so you can see that happening. Um, this is actually really, really cool. You can even see the error distribution, uh, what type of errors are being returned and from what locations. Uh, and then if you look at the world map, you can see red dots where DNS responses are, are not working. Uh, actually, sorry, that takes some time to update, so uh, you're not going to see that on the graph just yet, but you can see most of what you need to see from the overview page. Um, that's really neat. So we can see that the DNS responses are failing, and actually if I check my email, I should even have an email about that. Um, so let's see. Uh, oops, there's some Chinese in here, but it says availability value is 20% for the DNS monitor. So we got an alarm at 20%, uh, and then we got another alarm at 40% for the uh, site monitor, which was our HTTP monitor. So we are starting to get alarms, which is good. So if, if, uh, if we were a sysadmin, this is the part where we'd be getting woken up in the middle of the night by our phone sending us alarms. All right, so, so uh, let's take a look at the other two monitors and see what the issue is. Uh, the ping monitor is still at 80% availability, uh, my guess is that everybody else can ping Google just fine, but the Shanghai location is failing. So let's take a look at the world map here. Um, actually, again, this takes time to update, so it looks like uh, we're not going to be able to see all the data we want to see just yet. Uh, so go back to the overview page. Um, okay, yeah, you can see that the availability has dipped a little bit uh, here on the graph. Uh, you can see that response time jumped up and then went back down after we gave up on doing ping tests from Shanghai. And if you go into, I think, air rate trends, you should be able to see some information about the ping tests from uh, China failing. So yeah, you can see for the Shanghai region, we're now getting ping all failed. So it's not able to ping this Google IP address. Okay. And then the last thing to check on is the site monitor. Let's see why that is failing. All right, so here we are in the site monitor. The availability rate has slowly decreased to zero. Um, if we look at the world map again, we might not be able to see. All right, there we go. This one has updated. So you can see that things are working OK from Europe, from Singapore, and from Japan. We've got a big red dot on China uh, with the total response time at 30,000 milliseconds, which means that we timed out in accessing the site. All right, so there you have it. If you try to access Google from China, it's not going to work. So the DNS change that I made to test out the DNS monitor ended up impacting both of my other site monitors because of the fact that I changed my DNS record to point to Google. If I had pointed it at a service that is available from China, then these would still both be at 100%. All right, let's go ahead and fix our DNS record. Uh, again, we'll fast forward into the future, and then let's try breaking something that will only affect one of these two. That would be kind of fun. Uh, so first, let's fix DNS so that it points at our, our uh, actual server again. Um, 
I will just use, since I used a Terraform script to configure my server, I can get the IP address from Terraform output. Okay, and then we'll go into the DNS console and we'll configure both of these records to once again point to the correct place and then we should see our availability go back up to 100% on our DNS, HTTP, and ping monitors. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, wonderful. That is done. Uh, I will check both these boxes and hit enable to make sure that this record propagates. And then we will wait. All right, so we once again find ourselves in the future. And after fixing our DNS issue, you can see that all three of the alarms are now functioning correctly. So let's actually see if we can cause just one of these alarms to fail, just as a fun test. So we tried altering DNS and we did get a warning about the DNS failure as a result of that, but we also caused these other two tests to start failing because we tried to access Google services from Shanghai. One of our, one of our monitoring points is in Shanghai and you can't access Google from mainland China, so that caused these other two tests to fail as well. Uh, let's try to just make the ping test fail uh, and leave the other two tests intact. The easiest way to do that would be to go into the ECS console uh, where our uh, Elastic Compute server is, our ECS instance. Uh, go over there and actually go to the security group settings and disable inbound ICMP traffic which will cause ping to start failing. That should cause the ping test to fail but should allow HTTP and also DNS to continue functioning. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, down here in network and security I'll go to security groups uh, okay, the top group on the list here is the one I created today for our test website. I'll go to Add Rules. It'll take me over here to the inbound rule list, and I'll just delete this rule that allows ICMP traffic in, and then we'll see what happens. You'll get a big warning about changing the rules. Not a big deal. Just click OK. Uh, and we have now made it so that uh, ICMP traffic, ping traffic, cannot hit this instance. So let's go back to the Cloud Monitor console and uh, wait a couple minutes, fast forward in time once again, and see if this ping test starts failing. Once it starts failing, uh, we should get an email here in my personal account uh, indicating that a failure occurred. So, so let's check that out, see what happens. All right, so we've fast forwarded into the future, and you can see that the site monitor, which checks, uh, checks on our site via HTTP, is still working, 100% available. Uh, the DNS monitoring is also reporting complete success. But the ping monitor is reporting total failure, 0% availability. And if I check my email, I do in fact have a notification from the ping monitor saying that the average loss rate is 100%, meaning all ping text tests from all locations are now failing. So that works great. Uh, so what I want to do next is go ahead and actually re-enable uh, ping so that I I'll add a security group rule here to allow ICMP traffic in. Uh, let's go ahead and set that up. Inbound allow protocol type. Uh, we'll go with all, which changes this to dash one dash one. Actually, no, let's go with just ping. All ICMP. And then we'll say from anywhere. And I'll click OK and add that back in. And then we'll go ahead and delete the rule for port 80, which should cause the HTTP check to start failing. So now when I go back into Cloud Monitor, these two tech checks should be working perfectly and this one should be failing. So once again, we'll fast forward into the future and see what happens. All right, so here we are in the future. Some time has gone by. You can see that the ping monitor is now working again. The DNS monitor is working as it, as it has been through the last uh, couple demonstrations here. Uh, but that the HTTP monitor has a 30,000 millisecond response time, which means that all of the HTTP requests are actually timing out. So we have 0% availability, and sure enough, if I go in here, I do have an email from the My Site Monitor uh, availability alarm saying that the availability value is 0%. None of the five monitoring points can hit our website, which makes sense, because we went in here and we deleted the port 80 inbound uh, security group rule, so you shouldn't be able to get to this website anymore, uh, because all, all requests to this site will be denied, and sure enough, it just loads forever. It does not work. All right, so that's everything I wanted to say, more or less. Uh, please go check out the documentation. Check out Site Monitor. It's a very powerful tool. We've only scratched the surface. Uh, it has great potential for monitoring your sites and uh, web services both on and off Alibaba Cloud. It's a really cool tool. Uh, go check it out. All right, thank you. That was uh, really all I wanted to share this time. I hope you found the video useful, and I hope you join me in my next one. I'm sure that I will have some other content about Cloud Monitor soon, so stay tuned for that.